conjugate root theorem. Now the conjugate root theorem states that if p of x is a polynomial with rational coefficients, then the irrational roots of p of x equals zero occurs in conjugate pairs. That means that if we have a root a plus square root of b, then a minus square root of b is also a root. And similarly, if p of x is a polynomial with real coefficients, then the complex roots of p of x equals zero occurs in conjugate pairs as well. And again, that means that if a plus bi is a root, then a minus bi is also a root. So when we put this into practice, and we want to write the conjugate of each root, it says that 1 plus 3i is a root. The conjugate root theorem tells us that 1 minus 3i is also a root. And then for example 2, if negative 4 minus the square root of 7 is a root, then negative 4 plus the square root of 7 is also a root. Now I want you to take that idea and try example 3 and example 4 on your own. So pause, try to come up with the conjugate of each root, and then come back and see if you got the right answer. Hopefully you got negative 2 plus 9i for number 3 and 15 minus square root of 10 for number 4. Now it's really important that the part that is a real number stays exactly the same. Don't change the sign on that one. The only one that gets a sign change is the part in front of the imaginary number or the radical. Now let's take a look at how we're going to make irrational or imaginary roots into factors. So when you're given a root, your very first step is you want to make sure that your root is set equal to x. So let's take this and make it x equals square root of 3. Step number 2, we're going to square both sides of the equation. So we're going to take this left side and square it, and take this right side and square it. Make sure that you put each side in parentheses, because there are going to be some questions where depending on what roots we give you, it's going to make a really big difference whether that side is in parentheses or not. So as we simplify, x squared is just going to be x squared. And then the square root of 3 squared. Remember, this is square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which will give us the square root of 9, and that's equal to 3. So remember, when you take the square root of any number times itself, that number is going to end up coming out of the radical. Now when we look at step 3, it says make one side of your equation equal to 0. So the way to get one side of the equation equal to 0, and remember, we always want our x squared to be positive. So to get one side equal to 0, let's subtract 3 to the other side. So now we're going to have x squared minus 3 equals 0. And then our last step, it says take the expression side and set it inside parentheses. So here's our expression side. We're going to put that inside of parentheses. And this is the root square root of 3 written as a factor. Let's practice that a couple more times. So let's take each root and rewrite it as a factor. In example 1, First, we want to set x equal to negative 5i. Next, we need to take each side, put it in parentheses before we square it. So this is going to be really important this time because the left side is still just x squared. But on the right side, remember, that's really negative 5i times negative 5i. And when we do this, negative 5 times negative 5 gives us a positive 25. But i times i is i squared. And if you remember when we dealt with complex numbers before, i squared is really negative 1. So when you combine those two parts, we actually get a negative 25. Now, the next step we had was to get this equation equal to 0. And as always, we want to keep our x squared positive. So let's add 25 to the other side. So then we get x squared plus 25 equals 0. And our last step, take the expression side and put it in parentheses. So here is negative 5i written as a factor instead of a root. 
If you feel comfortable, I want you to pause, try example two on your own, and check back with me when you're finished. Otherwise, you can stay with me as we walk through it together. So again, our first step, we're going to set our root equal to x. And then again, this is another type of problem where putting parentheses on the whole side is going to be important before you square it. Our left side is just x squared. And again, whenever something is squared, that means you're going to have two of those multiplied by each other. So the numbers outside 2 times 2, that's going to give us 4. Square root of 7 times square root of 7 gives us 7. So 2 root 7 squared is actually going to be 4 times 7, which gives us 28. And then our next step, we get one side equal to 0, keeping x squared positive. So let's subtract 28 to the other side. And then we're going to have x squared minus 28 equals 0. And then we'll take our expression side, set it in parentheses. And this is our root of 2 root 7 turned into a factor. So why do we practice taking complex and irrational roots and turning them into factors? because we need to pair it with what we did in the last video of the factor theorem so that we can write a polynomial with rational coefficients so that p of x equals zero has the given roots. So in example one, it says that our roots are five and six i. For five, that real number, we're just gonna take that and do what we did in the factor theorem. So this is a positive five written as a factor that's going to turn into x minus 5. So remember, that's the shortcut. You're just going to take that and then make the sign opposite and then put it in parentheses. Now it's going to take a couple other steps to turn 6i into a factor. So let's do that over here on the side. x equals 6i is our first step. Then we're going to take each side, put it in parentheses, and square it. So we get the x squared equal to, and this is going to be, remember, 6i times 6i gives us 6 times 6 is 36. i times i is i squared, which really equals negative 1. So we have a negative 36. Then we want to get this equal to 0 with x squared positive. So add 36 to the other side. So we have x squared plus 36 equals 0. So then we're going to take our expression side, and that's going to join our other factor. And these are our two factors. Now if I asked you to give me the polynomial in intercept form, then you could just go directly to the answer and say p of x is equal to x minus 5 times x squared plus 36. And this would be your answer in intercept form. Now, if I ask for the equation of the polynomial in standard form, we would need to multiply out our factors. So we would FOIL. x times x squared is x cubed. x times 36 is a positive 36x. Negative 5 times x squared is a negative 5x squared and negative 5 times 36 gives us negative 180. So then we would just put this in standard form. So p of x is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared plus 36x minus 180. And again, this would be the answer, um, the polynomial written in standard form. I want you to try this example on your own. Think about everything we've done up to this point. Pause, try to work it out, write the equation in both intercept and standard form, and then check back with me when you're finished. Hopefully you got p of x equals x plus three times x squared minus five as your intercept form, and standard form is p of x equals x cubed plus three x squared minus five x minus 15. 
If you didn't get those, pause and check your work with mine and see where you might have made a mistake. That's it for this video. I'll see you in class for more practice.